Hi everyone, Jason here to walk you through the transform panel in Illustrator. Now the transform panel is not something that everybody uses because there's different ways to go ahead and manipulate and change your objects. But the transform panel definitely is something that I use all the time because of its incredible wealth of information. To call up your transform panel, go into the window menu and go down to transform and it will pop up here. Now, it may come up with a little shorter panel. Click on the cheese grater and choose Show Options. Now, the Transform panel may pop up when you create a shape simply because one of the options here is Show on Shape Creation, which means when you draw a shape, it may just pop up for you, which could be really handy, really nice. So let's walk through what the Transform panel actually does. I've got a rectangle here. And in the transform panel, we're going to start with our location and our size, rotation, and skew. Now I have everything set up here in millimeters. You can set up your uh, units any way you'd like. You can do that under your preferences. And you can also turn on your rulers under the view menu. And you can right click on your rulers and you can actively change your rulers just by right clicking on the ruler and changing the measurements there. Command or Control R turns on, turns off your rulers. Now, when we're dealing with our X and our Y, our X and our Y is our position on the artboard. And if we take our content and we move it up to the upper left-hand side of the artboard, you'll see that it becomes closer and closer to zero. The upper left-hand side of the artboard is zero. But where is this actually measuring from? Is it measuring from the upper left-hand corner, the top, the middle, the bottom? This reference point here tells you exactly where it's measuring from. Right now, it's measuring from the middle, but it's also going to scale from the middle. It will rotate and skew from the middle. This is all extremely important when you're trying to do very precise work. So if I would like to position this in the upper left-hand corner of my artboard, I could set these both to zero, but it would put the center of my object on the upper left-hand side of the artboard, not the upper left-hand corner. If I switch that reference point to the upper left-hand corner, it will then position itself there. Why is this important? Well, it's important when we go to, like, rotate something. If I go into my rotate here, and an easy way to rotate or change any value here, if you don't want to use the drop-down menu, just simply put your cursor in the field, and then use your up or down arrow to change that value. You can see if I'd like to rotate something, I need to know where it's going to rotate around. The default is the center, for scaling, rotating, skewing, sizing, positioning, but in many cases, that's not where you want things to line up or scale or transform from. You have to make sure you choose that reference point. I think of it as an anchor point, and that anchor point is basically going to be the place it's anchored and then scale and rotate from. So, super handy. Now, the width and the height here, pretty simple. If I were to go in and change the width of this to, say, 35, you'll notice that when this is linked together, it's going to constrain the width and the height, so it's going to scale it in proportion. If I decide to make this larger, you'll notice that it's going to scale right from the reference point. This could be very helpful. Say, I'm going to turn on my rulers here, and I'm going to grab a guide from one of my rulers, and I'm going to put a guide right there. I've got this container positioned at the edge of something. If I would like to make this wider, but I don't want to move that position where it's snapped to the guide, I can set my anchor point or my reference point to the left, and then I can add any width that I want to to this to make that change without having to change the size and then reposition that shape. So this could be really helpful as we go through. Now, changing the angle of rotation, changing the skew here, again, these are just basic things. Okay. You can go ahead and you can change the, the values. And remember, set your anchor point or your reference point, and that's where it's going to scale, rotate, or move position from. Pretty handy. Now you'll notice that we started off with our rectangle here, and I started uh, shearing the whole thing off, and now I have no other shape properties here. I'm going to go back to my rectangle or square here, and when I begin to manipulate the shape beyond what the prescribed shape was when I drew, a lot of times my properties will go away. If I start to skew this, 
you'll notice it says shape expanded here. Well, shape expanded simply means that it's no longer one of the basic shapes that we created. And if I go back to my basic shape here, this is what we have called live shapes. And live shapes have certain properties and parameters that you can very quickly and easily change if it's one of the basic drawing shapes. So here you can see with the rectangle properties, I can control the width and the height, which is redundant from here. I can change the rotation and I can also go in and I can change my corners. Now you'll notice that when I try to change the corners and nothing happens. And the reason why is because in order to get those corners to show up, I have to enter a value other than zero. And now I can go in and I can actively change the corners here. Now what's interesting is when we lock everything together here, this only links the corner radius. It does not link the corner style. So as I increase and decrease the radius, that will change based on my values, but it will not go in and it will not synchronize the corners. You have to do those all separately. Interesting. We're going to get to the scale corners and stroke effects here shortly because that's kind of its own little area. Now jumping over to the circle or the ellipse here, same thing. We have our point of reference here. And if we want to size something from the middle of our circle, we can go in and we can make that larger and smaller. And if you ever want to make something a perfect circle, the width and the height are the same. Now we have our width and height down here, but we also have our little pie start angles. And that little pie start angle is this little lollipop that hangs off the side. I call this my little waka waka handle because it looks like Pac-Man. And if you are as old as I am, you remember the sound that Pac-Man made when it came out in the early 80s because it was so cool. If you don't know who Pac-Man is, I still am going to call it the waka waka handle. When you grab this handle and you rotate it around the center, you're going to get your pie start angles. Here's your start angle and here's your stop angle. Okay, This is the start one that I moved. This is the stop one that I moved. And you can clip those arrows back and forth in order to invert that pie. Okay, And these are controlled by degrees here of the circle, Okay, not, um, not uh, angle. So here, this is 122 degrees of the entire circle. Okay, So interesting thing that you can do with a circle and an ellipse. If I jump over to my polygon, the polygon allows me to go in and actively change the number of sides here in the transform in the live shape. I could do the same thing by clicking on that diamond on the right hand side of the polygon and scaling that up or down. Size here is a little bit different. What's interesting here in the transform section is the width and the height are going to be overall. But because the polygon draws from the middle, you have the radius here, which is going to be half the width of the shape. You can also go in and you can, interestingly enough, control the size of the polygon by the length of one of the sides, which is really interesting. Never had to use that feature, but it could come in handy for sure. You can also change the corner radius on these as well. And we change one corner and it changes all the corners. What's interesting enough is when we draw the star here, the star has no live shape properties. It just gives us our position and our width and our height overall, and that's pretty much it. Nothing special about the star. The star is kind of one of those unique shapes that we don't have a lot of editing capabilities other than rotating, shearing, and scaling. Okay. So now what I want to do is I want to jump into sizing of these objects. Now this is pretty awesome. Okay. I have my shape here, and I'd like to make my shape a very specific size. And for right now, we're going to transform this from the middle. So the reference point is in the middle. I'm going to make my shape 123.5 millimeters wide, and I'm going to make it 48.6 millimeters high. Why? Because I can. So now what I have to do is I have to come in here, and I need to make this half as wide. So you break out your calculator, and you take 123.5, and you divide it by 2. Or, for those of you that know this trick, this is the calculator in the value field. All you have to do is type in after the value divided by 2. And it's going to cut the width in half, and it's going to anchor it on the reference point, and now I have it twice as wide. If I want to go and add 5 millimeters, I can say plus 5. 
it adds five millimeters. What happens if I want to go in and add 0.125 inches? I can actually add different units of measure to this, and if it adds an eighth of an inch, it will actually convert it to millimeters and add it. If I'd like to divide this by 0.3, I can divide it by 0.3. I know, it's crazy, isn't it? But here's one of the cool things as well. I can go ahead and I can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. But I can also go in and say I would like to add a certain distance to this, but maybe I'd like to go ahead and, you know, add something to this in terms of percentage, okay? So I'm going to go in and I'm going to say, I'm going to multiply this by using my asterisk. I have an extended keyboard, so I'm using my number pad. So if I would like to make this 10% larger, I can say times 110% right there, hit return, and it's going to make it 10%. So 100% is going to be actual size. 110% will make it 10% taller. If I'd like to subtract 30%, make this 30% shorter, I can simply say minus 30%. It's now 30% shorter. Is that not crazy? I know. It's amazing. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the width in half here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit return. But I just did a trick that you didn't see on the keyboard, which is absolutely amazing. Okay? Check this out. I'm going to select this shape. And I would like to keep this shape, but I would like another shape that is half this width. So I say divided by 2. Now, if I just hit return, it's going to give me the width that's going to be half, which is what I put in that field. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to simply say divided by 2, but before I hit return, I'm going to hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on the PC, which as you know, Option or Alt, click and drag, is going to go ahead and duplicate. But if you put in a value here and you hold down your Option key and then click return, Option duplicates. So now I could have something half the size. And here's my new shape if I say divided by 2 and again hit my Option or Alt and hit return. I now have that half the size as well. Try that with a circle. You want to have concentric circles? I'm going to say divided by 2 here. I'm going to actually I'm going to link the values together first. Then I'm going to go in and say divided by 2. Hold down Option or Alt and I get a circle that is half the size. Do that again. Divided by 2. Option or Alt return. It's again half the size of the other one. Um, is that not cool? I thought so. Okay. Now, because we're on the circle here, I want to show you that cool trick with that option or alt. When you have a circle and you'd like to create a pie shape here, and you go into the little invert pie, the little flip it tool, you can get the opposite and the opposite. So, what some people will do is then they will then go ahead and duplicate this shape. They will then flip it, and then they'll try to get this pie shape wedged back in there to actually fit, and they never quite do it. Don't bother. Select your circle that you've gone ahead and created your pie angles. You can flip this back and forth. Now, again, use your Option or your Alt key, and Option or Alt click on that flip, and that will duplicate and flip at the same time. I know it's amazing. Now, I don't make this stuff up, but I certainly want to show you how this works. So this can work that Option or Alt, when you change the values, change the width, anything, whenever you put in a value and you hold down Option or Alt and return, it will allow you to copy that, okay, or duplicate that shape based on those values. So, pretty cool. Now, next thing I want to talk about here is the scale corners effect, and this is something that is very, very, very vital to understanding how the scale corners work. If I create a shape, and I decide that I would like to have larger corners. And by the way, I'm just using my cursor in here and using my up arrow. If you're impatient like I am and you don't want to click your up or down arrow numerous times, hold down your shift key and use your up or down arrow, and that is going to do it in increments of 10. Whatever your measurement is, holding down the shift key and using your up arrow. I'm going to max out the corners. Okay, so I've maxed out the corner radius here. I can't make this any larger because my shape doesn't permit it. Okay, now, if my scale corners is not turned on 
and I go ahead and rescale my object here, you'll notice that my shape now changes and the corners stay exactly the same shape. So now this looks like kind of a pill shape right here, okay? But when I scale the whole thing down, the corners stay exactly what the corners were and I make it larger and it no longer looks like the same shape. If I turn on the scale corners now and I decide to resize this, you'll notice that those corners will then scale with my shape. This could be very, very helpful, okay? Because maybe you just want to take that rounded corner shape and make it bigger, but you don't want to lose that complete half circle at the top. That's what the scale corners are. Now I'm going to do something here. I'm going to turn off the scale corners and I'm going to hold down my shift key here and I'm going to scale this object smaller. Okay? I can hold down my shift key and scale it bigger. And you see with the scale corners turned off, the corners don't change size, but the shape now no longer is that pill shape. Now, when I start to scale this down and I start to make this smaller, I have a point where I basically run into a barrier where I can't make this any narrower. And the reason why is because I am at maximum corner widgetness, okay? I can't make my corners any smaller because my scale corners is turned off. If my corners, let me just set this to be 30 millimeters just to make it easy. If my corners are there, okay? And I try to scale it bigger. I can scale it any size that I want to and the corners stay the same size. But when I get down to a certain point, I can't make it any smaller because that is the smallest I can go. If I click on the scale corners, then I can scale it down and they will always remain exactly the same. This is very helpful. If the scale corners are turned off, you'll notice that I can't make it any narrower. I can make it taller, but I can't make it narrower because I run into the limitations of the corners. So, something to think about. You can turn this feature on and off whenever you need it or don't need it, but keep that in mind. Very important. The next one is scale stroke and effects. So here I'm going to set this to be a 10 point stroke around my object and I'm going to scale the corners too. This, these are completely independent. They do not work um, uh, with each other. It's just two different options. You want to scale the corners and scale the stroke and effects, that's fine. If you scale the stroke and effects, what's going to happen is when you make this larger, the stroke weight is going to get larger. It was 10 points, now it's 16.21. Now this is fine. But what happens if you don't want to scale the stroke? Because maybe I have these two objects here and I want to make them one larger, but I don't want the stroke weight to get bigger as I scale it. Then I've got two different shapes here with two different weights. And that's not what I wanted. So we can turn off that scale stroke and effects, still keep the scale corners on, and you can scale that and not worry about your strokes being different weights. Very, very, very important. One other thing we have here in the transform panel is the ability to go in here and flip things vertically and horizontally, which could be really cool. If I'd like to flip something, say I rotated this like at a 45 degree angle, I can go in and I can flip this vertically or horizontally just by choosing this simple command. Now there's no little buttons here to do it, but you can do that. Okay. One last thing that's nested inside the transform panel here that's pretty cool is the ability to go ahead and scale patterns. Now patterns are kind of interesting. If I go to my fill menu and I fill it with a pattern and there are some patterns in here. If I fill an object with a pattern, one of the things that this has is when I actually scale my object, you notice that the pattern doesn't move and doesn't scale with it. It's kind of like a window revealing more or less of the pattern. If I'd like to scale my shape, I choose from the transform drop-down menu, transform the object only, the shape. I can transform just the pattern where I can go in and I can scale the pattern larger and smaller here, or I can scale both the object and the pattern. So it can be kind of cool. If I transform the pattern only, then I can go in and I can get a hold of the pattern and transform it. But this is something that unless you use patterns doesn't make much sense. But once you start to use patterns, this is where you can go in and control how those things work. So don't underestimate the properties in the transform panel and what it can do for you. It's amazing. Being able to do math in here is fantastic and duplicate, but have so much control over your objects here. It's definitely worth a look. And if you've never used a transform panel, definitely jump on the bag and wagon. You're going to learn a whole lot from this.